Hey there everybody, PT Pop here with all four lobes of my brain securely bound behind my back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Call Center Survivor. Today I'm going to discuss which is better and which is worse, inbound call centers or outbound call centers. Stay tuned, baby. Hello, my name is Bob. May I help you today, Mr. Pete? Would you like fries with that? Would you like fries with that? So before I get to today's fine, fine topic, let me discuss with you a couple of ways you can support this channel to keep it going. If you want more quality, quality programming such as this, you can buy yourself a Call Center Survivor t-shirt on teespring.com. Not only that, you can buy my book, Press One for Murder. Great book. It's a book of fiction I wrote myself. See, written by Peter Tompkins. What oh, just flicked you off? Sorry, I didn't mean to flick you all off. How do you do this? Wrong hand, right there. I use my index finger not to be rude. And this is a book about a young guy named Jeremy who works in a call center and a variety of his customers turn up dead. They're dying, my friends. They're dying. And the police think Jeremy is killing them off one by one. Let me see if I'm in focus here. Are you in focus there, Pete? I'm a little bit blurry, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, don't you think? I think it is. Uh, but Press One for Murder is available for a, a small fee on Amazon.com. Buy yours now while, so, while digital supplies last. <laughs> so you can support me there. I also have a Patreon channel. A documentary you can rent or buy and if you're serious about supporting the arts and supporting myself and my channel here please 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 me give me money baby and um what other announcements do i have today let me check my notes here i am working on a new documentary which is about my life being raised by two alcoholic parents and how i overcame a lot of the abuse and the mental and emotional abuse being in, in that environment by turning to art and to music and i'm in the middle of the production of that not quite nearly done with it yet i'm still working on trying to get some people to be in the film i've been trying to get social workers or psychiatrists or psychologists to be in the film and again i'm not Sp spielberg and I guess people are reluctant to work with me because I guess they want their name somewhere. They want to be, you know, a, a lot of these counselors that I've met with are, are crazier than I am. I mean, these are just, one guy told me he couldn't be in my film because I wasn't vaccinated. And he was afraid, I guess, he would get the Cerveza bug because of me, because he I wasn't vaccinated. I don't know what me being vaccinated has anything to do with him, you know, <laughs> getting getting the bug, but whatever. But some of these people are, are loony. I've, I've talked to a couple of production companies. One guy told me, hey, man, you know, it cost me $4,000 a month to keep my studio up, and it's, it's not going to be cheap to come here, you know. Another guy told me the same thing. He said it cost me like two grand a month, two grand a week, he said, two grand a week to keep this place open. And I, I got to tell you up front, dude, I got to tell you up front, I'm a drug addict and I'm a, I'm a booze hound. I've, I'm a alcoholic. I'm off the wagon. But it's nothing to worry about. I, I just, you know, I just do it at night. I just do it at night. That's okay. So in the in this fine, fine world of entertainment, you're going to meet all kinds of people. So of another thing you can purchase if you're interested. You can't buy this hat. I bought this online from somebody else. But I have a new t-shirt. It's Why? Because there has to be something up there that's better than what's down here. See that? Quality, quality sweatshirt here. And I have this for sale. I will have this for sale on teespring.com. This is my own design, my own expression, the whole thing. So I think you'll like it. But that being said, I had this idea of making a video about what's better an inbound call center or an in or an outbound call center and which is better which is worse and i thought of this i was thinking about this and there's a couple of differences here now 
For those of you that are new to the channel, I talk about call centers being the modern day sweatshop because they're a horrific working environment to work in. And if you're not familiar with what a call center is, a call center is basically a place like when you call to get the balance of your credit card or you call in to add new services on your cable. You call the toll-free number. It goes through your telephone lines, goes into a building somewhere in the country or in another country and drops into a person's headset and you talk to a person on the phone. Where those people work is called a call center, whether it's here or the Philippines or wherever it happens to be. And <clears throat> there are inbound call centers and there's outbound call centers. Now, the first thing I want to do is define the difference between inbound and outbound. An inbound call center is where the person who works in the call center is receiving the calls into a headset. They talk in a headset and they say, Hello, senor. My name is Barbara. May I take your name and your number, please? Hello. You know, and they take the, the call comes in to the headset or it's, Hello, my name is Bob. May I help you today, Mr. Pete? Hello. So the call drops into the headset and they're taking the call and they're receiving it. On an outbound call center, it's just what it says it is. It's basically a sales position, usually a sales position, and the person is making calls. So the person with the headset on is placing an outbound call to somebody who they feel would be a, a perfect um, candidate to buy that company's product. So it's usually now it's on an auto dialer and the screen populates with a person they're calling. It'll say Joe Smith, perfect candidate for, you know, season tickets to the Baltimore Colts or whatever, because he was once a Baltimore Colts season ticket holder, but he isn't anymore. Shine and get them to be a season ticket holder again. <clears throat> so that's the difference between the two. And I've done both. I've done outbound and inbound. And I've, um, I've done sales and I've done customer service. I've done some technical support. I did outbound. Now, I've done real basic outbound, just hardcore telemarketing. And one was for a company called Arts Marketing. And I worked there for a couple of seasons selling or, or soliciting existing Cleveland Orchestra ticket holders or season ticket holders for funds uh, to raise funds for their educational program. And the Cleveland Orchestra has an educational program where they bring elementary school kids in on uh, field trips to see the orchestra for free, for, for free. But it's not possible unless the public supports it financially in some way, shape, or form. So I would call people, and it was a, uh, just a one-room, little room in, in like a 100-year-old building in downtown Cleveland, we had push-button phones, handheld phones, no headsets. We had a paper script, and we had paper leads on 8.5 by 11, um, basically 8.5 by 11. This is in the old days. These were on um, not, not printouts, but you um, – well, they were just 8.5 by 11 sheets. I can't think of what they're called now. Not Xeroxes, but they were um, – they were just eight and a half by 11 leads. And he had a little, you had their name and it said how much this person could potentially donate or how much they've donated in the past. And it just had a list of the people that had tried to call them before. And you just mainly would call them and you'd say, hey, Mrs. Smith, this is Pete with a Cleveland Orchestra. I'd like to talk with you today about donating to the educational fund. Click. Oh, okay. So she's not interested. And that's a real basic kind of primitive call center. I worked there in 2001 and 2000 through, 2001 through 2003. So two, two and a half seasons, something like that. And they have different seasons with the Cleveland Orchestra. That's outbound. You, you're calling you're calling out into the world, into the world, and you'll still bring the Cleveland Orchestra to the people and take their money from them to keep the children educated. You would think I was on some type of drugs, wouldn't you? Just uh, aspire healthy energy drink. With natural caffeine as opposed to synthetic caffeine, I guess. And that's that's an outbound. And in the bigger call centers, 
they're all on an auto dialer where it's all computer generated. The lead pops into your screen. You see who you're calling. You hear the ringing in your headset. You're like, hey, Mr. Smith, this is Pete with Wells Fargo Corporation. I'd like to talk with you about your home equity line of credit. They're like, hey, why the hell did you get my number? You know, I haven't been a Wells Fargo customer in 14 years. Then on an inbound, you know, as I said, you're taking calls. People are calling in asking you about the balance of their credit card or if they want to change services with their cable, if they want to add a telephone line, the balance of uh, their bank account, any number of things people call into an inbound center for. And in my experience, this these are the great this is the greatest difference between the two. When you're on an inbound call center. You're in a situation that puts you on defense. Defense! You're always you're back on your heels constantly in this situation. You're just like, you, you don't know what to expect in each call. Every call is usually new. I mean, in, in today's modern call centers, you can probably predict that your average person is just going to be a complete a-hole to you. Because most people don't talk to a live person until... They've gotten so infuriated with the auto attendant and with those automatic bots that they have now that talk to you that they're like, you know, they're screaming at the receiver, you know, representative, representative. And then by the time you get them, you, you get the brunt of it until they calm down or you calm them down or whatever. So you're on the defense. You're, you're constantly, you know, you're like a, de a defense, defensive back or a defender in a football game. Defense. You don't know if the offense is going to, do a run pass option or a running play or a passing play or a bootleg, you know, is the quarterback going to run with it? You don't know. And and you try to guess and you try to prepare it best you can. But on an outbound call center, you're in control because you you know what you're doing. You 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 have the sales pitch, you have the product, you have the script. Excuse me. You have Boingo Boingo with you. I got to record that. Put that on a sound by. Can you see him there? On the top of my microphone. And uh, that's a bit annoying, isn't it? And so on the on the on the in on the outbound, you ha you know what to expect. You're you're at an advantage over the person you're calling. And from my experience and what I've experienced in this is I was much happier in an outbound setting. Because I was in control. Now, you don't really have to be a control freak. I'm not a control freak. But it was kind of nice to be able to dance and move and maneuver and and do the, you know, the rope-a-dope and try to convince these people to buy your product. I got a kick out of trying to turn people around and to sell them the product. So I found it a lot less stressful because no one's yelling at you. People will get pissed and they'll just hang up on you because you're a telemarketer. And they'll just be like, screw you. Click. You know, you just hear dial tone. And what I found on the inbound side is it's a lot more stressful. Um, 20 years ago, I worked for a company called SureGuard. And SureGuard was a storage company, you know, one of those self-storage places. And they sold storage units. And I was in an inbound call center, but I wasn't customer service. I was talking to people who were interested in buying or renting storage space from me. So it was still it was still inbound, but I was still sales. And when 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 you're a salesperson and you're not customer service, you're not dealing with somebody who already has the product who's calling to complain. You're calling to somebody who's got already has an interest. And I found those positions as well, even though it's inbound was a lot more comfortable because you had somebody who already had an interest in your product so you could turn them around and sell them really quick and get them on off the phone. And a lot of times people say, hey, buddy, I know what you're trying to do. Just cool it, cool it with the sales pitch and, and let me talk to you. And you hear that a lot, especially if you're coming on too strong at first. But for the most part, customer service, inbound customer service is brutal. You're constantly back in your heels you're constantly getting punched and you're trying to figure out how to you know get get a jab and get control you know hug them in the ropes or something like that it's it's awful and people are today are belligerent demeaning racist cruel 
uh, just any any type of adjective or mean type of description you give to people today over the phone they have mega 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 phone balls and i found that the inbound environment especially if you're dealing with customer service is extreme it's just it's stressful stressful this is an understatement and as i've said in other videos it's stressful because number one you're under trained you get anywhere from two days to two weeks maximum training in most places you have to learn an entire catalog of products. I think my wife is home from her doctor's appointment. I heard voices. I'm hearing voices. It must be the, the natural caffeine. It's very stressful. So between the two, I guess what I'm getting at is, from my personal experience, I find that outbound telemarketing positions are better than inbound as far as inbound customer service. If it's inbound sales, I've done that. That a Sales is better than customer service, period. But with sales, you have to reach the um, sales goals. If you don't reach the sales goals, they, they find reasons to get rid of you. You have to reach a certain percentage each month. And if you're not making it, they either take you off that program or they get rid of you. I fortunately was pretty strong in, on, in phone sales and never got eliminated um, because, you know, I, I just got a kick out of hearing people go, okay, yeah, I guess, I guess I'll rent that space or I'll, I'll take that home equity line of credit. So what I would suggest is if you're in a position where you're considering working in a call center and you feel you have some decent sales skills, I would go for an outbound position or an inbound sales position, outbound sales or inbound sales. I would try to steer away from inbound customer service because you will get beat the crap every single day. You'll be stressed out. You'll overeat. You won't be able to sleep. You, everything will just start to fall apart in your life. You won't have any family life. You won't see your kids again. You won't see your wife or your husband again. And it'll really get really nasty. I mean, that's just how I see it. I would say Outbound is better than inbound, by far. And when I worked at SureGuard, the storage company, I remember I hadn't really worked. I'd worked in one inbound call center for customer service about five years prior to that. But I remember walking past the customer service department. I was in the sales department. I was like, I told my boss as we're walking through, I said, oh, man, I'd like to work in customer service. He goes, no, Pete, you don't want to work in customer service. You don't, don't ever do it. They just yell at you and scream at you. And just as we walked through, this girl broke down in tears who was on the phone in customer service. She was just sobbing because somebody was so mean to her. So that's that's my two cents. You know, do what you want. Um, I would definitely suggest trying to do outbound sales or inbound sales. I would try to steer completely away from customer support or customer service in any way, shape, or form. So there you have it. Oingo Boingo, thanks for watching. And um, check out my movie, the documentary, The Artist. The Artist, a documentary. And I'll put a link for it in the description here. Hope you're all having a good day. Have a good rest of the week. It's about 70 degrees here in Cleveland. It was really cold yesterday. It's going to be about 90 tomorrow. Tomorrow or Saturday. So take care. I'm signing off. Have a good day. Bye. Would you like fries with that? Would you like fries with that?